There are plenty of you that have watched me on here for at least some period of time, and many of you for several years, close to five years now. So you can imagine that July 24th, 2015 has been an interesting day for me to say the very least. And for those of you wondering, yes, indeed. I have plenty to say on the topic of Hulk Hogan and his stupidity. You have to know, based off of what I've always said about the man, combined with who I am and who you know me to be, and kind of what I represent, you know I'll have plenty to say, and I will. And I promise you that's coming very, very soon. But before I talk about that in a video and compartmentalize that onto its own talking point, I thought there was something else that was really important to talk about, too. It's really sad to me that the only attention that professional wrestling can ever get anymore, it seems like, is the negative attention. And granted, that's a reflection of our society. It's a reflection of the times. We gravitate to the epic fails. We gravitate to people doing dumb and stupid things, the negatives of the world. It's who we are as human beings. It's our nature. It's what we thrive off of. We'll sit there and talk about how we want to be positive and we want to think and talk about positive things, yet we always gravitate towards the negativity. Even the so-called positive people ultimately gravitate towards the negativity. And it's really sad that for professional wrestling, all the good things that it can be as an art form, as an entertainment genre, it literally seems like it takes somebody dying, somebody killing somebody, somebody getting arrested, or somebody saying or doing something incredibly stupid in order for professional wrestling to get any type of play in any way, shape, or form amongst the mainstream media. And that's sad. And it's sad that that's the only time a lot of times us as fans we'll talk about wrestling is from a negative standpoint. I feed into that, and you feed into that too, frankly. Again, it's kind of an indictment on our species, and it's an indictment on our society, and in particular on the media culture and social media culture of today. So I'm not that surprised to see the WWE acted swiftly and you know, disposed of Terry Balea, Hulk Hogan very, very quickly. This doesn't surprise me. This is something you would expect out of a corporation like the WWE because, especially at this point in time, in this nation's history, if you will, one thing you really don't want to be associated with is racism. That's not good for business. You know, usually I'll say the only bad press you can get is no press at all. Well, when you get bad press for racism and racist-ass things and discrimination... That kind of goes into the even worse press. That's really, really bad. Not a category you want to get into. So the WWE is, of course, going to do their corporate things and try to spin this and try to make themselves look like they're with the times and they're all about this and they're all about equality and they're all about fair and equal chances for everybody. And I guess I've got to ask the question. I'm sure others have too. Why is WWE bothered by Hulk Hogan's racism? Where is this fake outrage coming from? I don't get it. And for those of you that have watched WWE for years, you know the WWE's history when it comes to race and how they treat their non-white performers. And needless to say, the history isn't good. For those of you that aren't all that educated on just how bad the WWE has been on this issue over the years, let me enlighten you. Let me educate you a little bit. This is the same WWE back in the 80s, yes, but still did it, that did a video with the Slickster, mind you, a black manager called the Slickster, and the title of it was Jive Soul Bro where you've got music and the song and the chorus is talking about him being a jive soul bro, and they make sure that they zoom in on the guy eating fried chicken. This is the same WWF that decided to have Dusty Rhodes get a helper, a black woman, and name her Sapphire. If you're not understanding why that would be a bad thing, look it up. The internet is a great and wonderful place to get all types of information. This is the same WWF that at WrestleMania 6 decided it was okay for Roddy Piper to basically go out there and half blackface. This is the same WWE that several years later basically allowed Goldust to go out there and full-on blackface. This is the same WWE 
that has a long story tradition of stereotypical characters, especially for their black performers. Not something that's just unique to black performers, because you could certainly focus on Hispanic and Asian wrestlers and how they've been treated by the WWE over the years, and that's an entirely different topic and gives you plenty of content to talk about in a video. But in the heart of the matter here, let's look at some of the characters that the WWE has put out over the years. Men on a Mission. Oh, look, it's the black guys. They're dancing and they're shucking and jiving. And, of course, one of them's just got a fucking rap. Flash Funk. Do I need to go any further? The Godfather. And, yes, a lot of us enjoyed the Godfather character. And a lot of us liked the Godfather. And he was one of those Attitude Era characters that fit perfectly for the times but would only work in those times. But at the end of the day, this was a black man talking about getting high and pimping out white women. Dancing and doing all this crap. That's not a little bit racist. Our truth. His whole gimmick is a rapper. Because, of course, that's what the black man loves to do, right? Look at Crime Time for crying out loud. It was a black tag team, and you basically implied that they were fucking criminals, not just in the actions that you had them commit on television by having them go steal crap and doing this and that. You had them sit there and dress up in Timberlands. You had them sit there and sag their pants. And you called them fucking Crime Time. You had Brodus Clay be the Funkasaurus because, again, that's what we want them all to do because that's what they love to do, right? And even now, you look at the current WWE product. There's not a whole lot of black talent on the main roster as it is. And when it, there is, they seem to find a way to always want to try and group them together. And you look at the New Day. Instead of being one type of tag team that talks about relevant social issues and does it in a way that would befit the men that are portraying the characters, you know, Kofi Kingston has a college degree, I believe Big E has a college degree, and I most certainly know Xavier Woods has a college degree, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, he has a fucking doctorate. So instead of them having to be the new age 21st century black man trying to shatter all types of stereotypes, we have them be a fucking black preacher group. I can just imagine Vince and Kevin Dunn eating carrots backstage, beating off to the thought of this shit, and even the primetime players, yeah, they got over, yeah, people like them. But at the end of the day, it's another shuck and dive, jive dance group. That's exactly what the fuck they are. So their characters, for so many of these black performers throughout their history, have so many racist and prejudicial and stereotypical type of connotations to them that it floors me that the WWE all of a sudden now in 2015 magically is bothered by racism. Oh, we believe in providing opportunities to all types of performers. Is that fucking so? Because if we dig a little deeper, we can look even more at the history of your company. I was just reminded today, as a matter of fact, when it came to Triple H and Booker T and their feud in 2003, I remember the part of Triple H basically implying that somebody like Booker T should never be the world heavyweight champion, knowing goddamn good and well what the fuck that meant. This is the same Triple H that told Booker T to get his nappy head out of the ring. His nappy head. But since he was banging the boss's daughter, we'll just let that go because that was a good fucking idea, right? 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 This is the same WWE that decided to give Shelton Benjamin a mama. And not just any mama, but a mama that's going to fulfill so many types of stereotypes that again has Kevin Dunn chopping down on freaking carrots and Vince McMahon beating off the bodybuilder pictures. This is the same WWE that has a flat-out, basically, open, overt, everybody knows it, everybody understands it, racist, and Michael PSA is at the very top of the creative ladder to, at one point in time, he basically said to Mark Henry that he was more black than Mark Henry was. But he didn't use the black word, if you get my drip. The same Mark Henry that they were basically trying to call the silverback at one point in time. Silverback, monkey, you get the fucking point. But again, this is a company that is outraged by racism and doesn't stand for it and it bothers them. Get the fuck out of here. The same WWE that fired Alberto Del Rio because he got pissed and decked somebody that repeatedly used racist and stereotypical slurs towards him. They didn't fire the offender. They didn't fire the guy that said this shit. They fired the guy that retaliated, the guy who was the victim of the racist treatment in Alberto Del Rio. And above all else, 
We're pissed off about what Hulk Hogan says, and we're bothered by the racism and what he said. And we're going to sit there and try and wipe them from the WWE history books as much as we possibly can. Oh, look it. Andre the Giant tripped over a banana peel at WrestleMania 3. Ultimate Warrior pinned the Invisible Man at WrestleMania 6. Bret Hart didn't have anybody run in to beat Yokozuna for the title at WrestleMania 9. The Rock sat there and fought The Rock at WrestleMania 18. We're trying to sit there and wipe them completely from the record books, wipe them completely from your website, any mentions of them and anything else, take them from Tough Enough and every damn thing else, fire them from your fucking company. But this is the same company that at one point in time put the CEO and the chairman of the board, Vincent K. McMahon, on television to which he said, keep it up, my, you get the point. So when Hulk Hogan says racist crap, we're going to fire him. When the CEO and chairman of the board says it on national television, not at the end of a sexcapade that happens to be recorded, but on live television with pre-thought to it, with malice in it, he went out there and did it even though everybody's telling him don't fucking do it, he did it anyway. But it's Hulk Hogan that deserves to be wiped from the record books and basically be given the Benoit treatment. So the freaking owner of the company can say this shit on national television, but we're not bothered by that. We don't try to wipe him from the record books. Instead, we try to sit there and wipe Hulk Hogan from the record books. And what's astounding about this is what Hulk Hogan said is the WWE reality. You'll see idiots on Twitter talking about how smart the WWE is, uh, distancing themselves from Hogan and getting out on front of this. No, they're not. You fucking morons. This is the WWE reality. Why hide Hogan and why hide from Hogan when what he said represents so much of what your company has stood for throughout his 50 plus year of history and represents so much of the thought process of so many of the guys at the top of the damn company, Triple H, Kevin Dunn, Vince McMahon, you, Michael P.S. Hayes, you name it. What did Hulk Hogan say that was anything different than what any of those other guys at the top of that company in the most important positions have either thought to themselves or flat out said to others throughout the years? And we're sitting there giving Hulk Hogan the same treatment we're giving a Chris Benoit who reportedly allegedly killed his wife and his child. We are equating Hulk Hogan's stupidity and racism to murder, including child killing. Now, granted, I hate racism. I despise it. It is the scourge of humanity in many ways. But, in the grand scheme of things, this is like when you hear somebody gets 10 years for shooting somebody five times and they happen to live, but they got 50 years for selling a couple of keys of cocaine. Which crime is worse? Which thing is worse? At some point in time, there has to be some common sense here. Yeah, I can see you wanted to distance yourself from Hogan, even though he is your reality. He represents what you think and who you are and what your company has been for so many years and still to this day fucking continues to be. But you were treating him the same way as a fucking double murderer. This is ridiculous. And what's even more ridiculous about this, mind you, is the fact that all the while, you could go to WWE.com, you could type in Hulk Hogan's name in the search bar, and you'll find a bunch of shit that is completely and totally unrelated to Hulk Hogan. Up to and including when you go to the Hall of Famer section, you click on the H's, Hulk Hogan is nowhere to be found, so you're basically telling me that you've now also yanked Hulk Hogan out of the WWE Hall of Fame, and you have completely erased any mention of him off of your site whatsoever. Now, am I the only one that's bothered about this? Am I the only one that is in particular bothered by the double standard of this? What Hulk Hogan said was ridiculous. It represents so many things that has been wrong with white America for so many generations in this country. But we yank him from the WWE Hall of Fame and any and all mentions and references to him on the WWE website. Yes, somebody like Abdullah the Butcher, who proudly and gleefully goes spreading his hepsy-infected blood all over the independent scene for so many damn years, 
We make sure that he's in the WWE Hall of Fame, and we've mentioned him all over our fucking website. We sit there and celebrate Pat Patterson like he's some great freaking icon to worship, all the while knowing his history of sexual harassment to office workers, to the talents. Imagine how many careers he's potentially ruined because they wouldn't fucking pony up and mount up and get on the Pat Pee-Pee and the French Tickler and do the bad thing. Not to mention all the reports of maybe perhaps taking some liberties with Ring Boys. But there, wouldn't you know, they have Pat Patterson Appreciation Day. We've got him in the WWE Hall of Fame. We've got him all over Legends House. We're celebrating him coming out and all of this other bullshit. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame. You can find all types of mentions of Jimmy Superfly Snook on the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh site and on the WWE.com website as well, even though most people, I think, of logical, sound mind and perhaps body, pretty much believe that Jimmy Snook, Superfly Snook had killed his girlfriend over 30 years ago in a Roy Rage event, to the point where the WWE pretty much was complicit with covering up this fact. All of these years later, Yes, Superfly Jimmy Snook is not somebody that we ostracize. He's not somebody that we wipe from the record books. We celebrate him. We talk about his legacy. And we keep his fucking picture on the WWE.com website in the Hall of Fame section. You just inducted Arnold Schwarzenegger into the celebrity wing. The same Arnold Schwarzenegger that's a known womanizer and adulterer. Oh, that's such a great example. The same WWE that celebrates Mike Tyson. And yeah, on the one hand, Mike Tyson is many things that are cool and everything else. But Mike Tyson's had some demons. He's had some issues. And he's done some bad, horrible, disgusting fucking things. This is the same Mike Tyson that has gone off on so many reporters over the years with just horrible, offensive language. Talking about he's going to eat people's children and everything else. He's bitten a man's fucking ear. And oh, by the way, he served five years in prison for a rape conviction. But yet when it comes to Mike Tyson, we gloss over all of that. We ignore all of that because he helped usher in the Attitude Era. And he was a part of so many important things in 1998. So Hulk Hogan's a racist. Bad. Mike Tyson rape is good. Hulk Hogan uses the N-word bad. Mike Tyson doesn't understand the meaning of the N-word. No. Good. Excuse the fuck out of me. And then when it comes to racism, if we're going to keep it in an apples-to-apples apples fucking category, if you will, again, I will emphasize, what Hulk Hogan said was ridiculous. What Hulk Hogan said was atrocious. What Hulk Hogan says, again, to me, represents so many ills of what white society has felt for generations. And while progress has been made, there is obviously still a lot of fucking work to do. But we are going to demonize Hulk Hogan. We are going to vilify Hulk Hogan. And we are going to try and erase Hulk Hogan from any and all mentions on anything WWE related, basically treating him like he killed his wife and his freaking kid Yet all the while, wouldn't you know, when you go to WWE.com and you search Donald Trump page after page after page of Donald Trump mentions, wouldn't you know, when you go to the H's on the Hall of Fame section, there's no Hulk Hogan, but goddamn, when you go to the D section, there's this bad hair, there's this suit, it's Donald J. fucking Trump. How is what he said about Mexicans and illegal immigrants any better than what Hulk Hogan said about black men? Now, even if you're black and you are horrendously offended by like what Hogan said, and you should be, just like you should be anybody using that word up to including your own community, how is what Donald Trump said any fucking better? You don't see WWE erasing any and all mention of Donald Trump. You don't see the WWE coming out against Donald Trump and everything he's fucking said and all the racist shit that's come out of his diarrhea hole. So Donald Trump's racism is okay, but Hulk Hogan's is not. Well, excuse the fuck out of me, but that's hypocrisy to the highest degree. Not to mention all these other people I've mentioned that have done all these other bad things. I'm not expecting them to be saints, but at the end of the day, Jesus Christ. Why all of a sudden now is WWE so bothered by Hulk Hogan's racism? 
Maybe it's because they understand when it comes to the history of the business, it comes to the history of that company, the number one name that people will associate with that company, no matter what any of you want to say and live in your fantasy world and believe, at the end of the day is Hulk Hogan. And Hulk Hogan gets searches. Hulk Hogan gets mentions. Hulk Hogan trends more than anybody else currently or formerly in that damn company throughout its entire history. So they tried to get out on front of it, and all the while to me, they made themselves look like jackasses. Because everything that Hogan said is the WWE reality. Ask the black performers that have the courage after they've been future endeavored because they sat there and got buried and mistreated and given shitty characters and shitty gimmicks and shitty opportunities what they think about it. Hogan said so many things that the people at the top of the WWE believe. They live through. They believe in. And all the while, we'll ostracize him, we'll demonize and vilify him and try to bend his ass out of the WWE but we'll celebrate Donald J. fucking Trump, who continues to say hateful, ridiculous, freaking things on the presidential campaign trail. Vince, just because he's a Republican doesn't make him a good guy, right? If he was a Democrat, just because he's a Democrat doesn't make him a good fucking guy, okay? But the worst thing of all about this, again, is I can't figure out why the WWE is so bothered by him. Hulk Hogan's racism and what he said. Because not only is it the reality, but it continues to be the reality and will be the reality going forward. In over 50 years of this company's history, they have never had a black man hold the number one title, which has always been the WWE Championship. Don't give me that Booker T and Mark Henry second tier World Heavyweight Championship bullshit because you know that's not the same. They didn't even want to put the WWE name on it. The top prize has always been the WWF, WWF, WWE fucking title. Even now the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. They make sure they emphasize that WWE name first. There has never been a black man that has held that title. And don't you dare sit there and bring the fucking rock because when the rock himself views himself as a moan first and foremost the wwe always references him being Samoan first and foremost he doesn't fucking count because both the wwe and the rock want to make sure that you know that he doesn't fucking count over 50 years and this company still hasn't had one man of the black persuasion be the WWE champion. 50 fucking years! But all of a sudden now, you've got Hogan in a bad place on a sex tape in a private conversation some, say some ridiculous and horrible shit. And all of a sudden you're about equality and justice for all. Well, excuse the fuck out of me. But I'm calling WWE out on this bullshit. You can't sit there and be about racism and prejudice, and stereotypes for 50 plus fucking years, and then all the while get angry when somebody who's so closely associated with your company that you've put out there to do so many things from a, a mainstream standpoint for so many years says something that, frankly, matches up to everything you do and everything that you are and everything you fucking believe in. And at the end of the day, no matter what any WWE shit Sheep or any fucking idiot in that company would try to say to me to tell me otherwise. How can I sit there and justify my viewpoint and say that the WWE is all about racism? Well, like I said, go to WWE.com, enter Donald Trump into the search. Then after you see all the mentioned page after page after page, go click on that Hall of Fame page. And there's his racist ass loud and proud. WWE is full of shit. And while Hogan deserves shit, and I'm not going to defend him on it, I hope the WWE gets a lot of shit for this too. And I hope that one major thing that comes out of this is yet another awakening for people to where they can finally have the courage to acknowledge just how bad the WWE has been on this over the years. And maybe this would be a wake-up call to the mainstream to focus more on the WWE on this in an era, in a time, in a place where black athletes dominate the NBA, where black athletes dominate in certain respects in the NFL, in an era where there are more black baseball stars at a time where performance, or excuse me, participation by black athletes is at a damn near all-time low, and in a sport like hockey, 
They have more black stars than the freaking WWE. If any positive can come out of this, it's I hope that the mainstream media catches on to this and would actually do some fucking oh, I don't know journalism and put the WWE's fucking nuts in the ringer and put their feet to the fucking fire because they deserve it. Fucking cowards. Don't sit there and run from Hogan. If anything, you should make him the poster child. Because he is everything you have ever been. He is everything you are. He's everything that you will continue to be and everything that you believe in.